So we, we only have three returning scholarship players who played last year. So we got a lot of new guys. Um, and uh, it's great that we, we've changed the NCAA rules where in the summertime we can spend four hours because we've needed four hours just to make sure we could introduce everybody to everybody and make sure they get used to playing with one another this summer. Yeah. With no Jake uh, on the floor this year, obviously he's going to be around the team. And that's, mm -hmm. that's probably where his destiny is. Coach Lindsay, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. yeah. <laughs> Uh, but how big is that on the floor not to have a guy who knows what he knows? Well, he, Jake is uh, uh, like having a coach on the floor, always knew uh, um, when and where the ball needed to be, what defense. Uh, um, if someone didn't know a play, uh, he would be able to say, hey, you're supposed to be over here. So uh, that experience and uh, um, just uh, uh, everything that he brought as far as leadership-wise will definitely be missed on the court. Uh, he's he's a Baylor guy and loves Baylor. and. Each and every day he's trying to help make sure this team's ready to go so that uh, uh, we can be successful this year. So what's it looking like out there, Scott? Chaos. No. <laughs> That's probably one of the, so, the least experienced. So it's, it's, it's the, the least experienced uh, um, we've had since our second year here. So it's been a long, a long time since we've been this inexperienced. But at the same time, uh, we really like the group uh, in general. Uh, they work really hard, spend a lot of time uh, uh, on their own in the gym. Uh, very good uh, uh, academic group. Uh, they handle their business in the classroom. Uh, last year, uh, we didn't have as many, much outside shooting as we've had in previous years, and that was one thing we tried to uh, recruit. And um, from the three-point line, hopefully we have more weapons and we shoot a higher percentage, can shoot more um, threes. Uh, at the same time, just getting everybody on the same page and adjusting to uh, college basketball for a lot of them. Given how young this team is, how, how nice was it to be able to get Jared on the floor and to have him at your disposal this season? Uh, definitely, uh, uh, Jared uh, Butler is somebody that uh, uh, comes from a great program with Coach Bird. Uh, um, he's produced great players like Tweedy Carter and Rico Gathers, and uh, uh, um, all Coach Bird's guys know how to compete, know how to win. And Jared Butler is a competitor. He's a great athlete. Uh, he was a really good football player um, before uh, uh, focusing on basketball his uh, uh, senior year. So he's somebody that uh, uh, can run the floor, sees the floor real well. Uh, uh, has good size and strength, uh, all the intangibles you'd want it from a, a, a player. So really excited to have him. You said you, you know obviously you don't have experience, but but you feel good about the athletes that you have. Yeah, um, definitely excited about the potential of this group, and know that. Uh, um, uh, each and every day we're going to get better. We'll be better throughout the year than we are in the beginning of the year. But uh, we have a lot of good pieces, excited about uh, uh, seeing how they uh, come together and how quickly we can come together. Um, it does help us and, and benefit us with uh, uh, the expanded uh, uh, hours this summer. Uh, that's especially when you have a young group. That's something that's beneficial. Uh, the other thing is uh, uh, it's it's. Next year we get a foreign tour. Uh, it wouldn't have been bad to have one uh, um, this summer because that really helps you early on in the year. But, uh, uh, again, I think our fans will really enjoy this group because uh, if they get to, to meet them and know them, they're really going to like them. Uh, I think they're going to like uh, um, how athletic we have. Um, probably more guys on our team that uh, have a 40-inch vertical jump or right around there than we've ever had. So we have a lot of athleticism and then uh, improved outside shooting. So with that inexperience, do you have do you even you're starting now? Do you have a gauge on who your starting five is yet, or is that very much ready to be seen? Well, that's that's uh, <laughs> the great thing about having two scrimmages. Um, Besides practice and, and getting a feel for who can do what, uh, you never really know till the lights come on, and that that gives us an opportunity to see um, them in a little truer competition in a, a, a different form. And then from there, uh, then we'll be able to make assessments on that. The the good thing is you have a lot of depth, you have a lot of different possibilities, a lot of different combinations, uh, and a lot of people that can uh, help our team. So uh, um, the big thing is just make sure we're passing the ball to the right people, and uh, we'll be okay from there. With the returners, do you have to do anything to maybe guard against them trying to do too much, trying to carry too much of a load with, with the limited experience? 
Well, Kings is a senior, which is great, but uh, uh, Tristan and Mark have only played one year, so <laughs> it's not like they're bringing a ton of experience with them either. Uh, the good thing is uh, uh, um, we do have uh, Mario, who uh, did play a year at Mississippi State and then sat out, so he's a little more familiar with our system. And then um, Makai Mason, somebody that anytime you get a post-grad, he's been four years in college. Um, he's been resting his body for the last two years, so he should be free. Um, but we're trying to keep him uh, uh, healthy. And uh, those two guys at least have uh, college experience under their belt. Well, the the irony is uh, um, uh, Makai is one of those guys that uh, loves to be in the gym. And one of the stories I loved hearing about him in Yale from Yale was he went to a, a, a dance formal and he was on his little scooter. And he left halfway through to go get 500 shots up in the gym and uh, on a scooter. So he's somebody who loves to be uh, uh, in the gym. And hence, you got to guard against him doing too much on his foot because uh, 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 his foot's had a couple surgeries and has a lot of scar tissue and wear and tear. And you just got to make sure you protect him also. Uh, do you expect to have Mario back for the opener? Or um, remains to be seen. He's uh, um, doing well so far, so uh, uh, it's, it's nice to see him progressing. Is it arthroscopic knee surgery? Is that what it is? It, David Chandler can give you the specifics. Okay. <laughs> Coach, what do you see out of your bigs coming up this season? Uh, Tristan's uh, really improved. Um, he's somebody last year finished uh, uh, the year actually analytically our second best, uh, most efficient offensive player in Big 12 play. So somebody that uh, finished strong. It was uh, um, uh, unfortunate that he got injured at the end of the year and couldn't get the experience of postseason under his belt and continue to improve during that time. But uh, physically, he's gotten bigger and stronger and somebody that uh, more confident and uh, uh, tweaked his shot a little bit. I think he's more efficient with his shot now. Uh, so we're going to expect a lot from him and need a lot from him. Freddie Gillespie is somebody that uh, 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 might be one of the most improved players that uh, I've ever been around just from uh, uh, his time here to where he is now. And uh, he's got a 7'6 wingspan, so he does a great job contesting uh, shots at the rim. Uh, he's physical, um, does a great job rebounding, and his offensive game has continued to get better. Uh, Flo is uh, uh, somebody with a 7'5 wingspan. So a lot of athleticism with those two, and uh, they contest a lot of shots around the rim, which uh, is great for us from the standpoint. Uh, anytime guards go in there, they're facing shot blockers in practice, which should prepare them for uh, what we face during the season and in Big 12 play. You said Tristan's bigger and stronger. It's not like he came in here. At 190 pounds. I mean, he was already big and strong. Yeah, yeah, he's a big guy. <laughs> so he's, 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 he's around 250 and uh, um, depends what he ate that day uh, or where he falls on that, that uh, spectrum. But uh, he's well put together and his body fat's good. So um, it's good muscle and good weight. Mario is one of those guys that's a, a, a jack of all trades. He handles it. He defends it. Um, he's physical. Uh, uh, he, he really, uh, um, there's no deficiency or weakness in his game. Uh, at the same time, uh, that that's what uh, with positionless basketball nowadays and people being able to uh, play one through four, one through five, and guard one through four, one through five. He's a perfect fit for that. Somebody, somebody similar to Torian. I think Torian was a uh, uh, a little, little more. Uh, um, he was leaner. Uh, Mario's a little thicker. Um, and Mario's somebody that uh, uh, not the consistent scorer Torian is right now. And uh, Mario's probably uh, somebody who passed it a little bit better at this stage. Do you feel like you guys are going to be tested pretty quickly with the non-conference? Yeah, they, we, we, we went back to after four years of having the number one uh, over a four-year average, uh, number one uh, um, uh, schedule RPI-wise uh, using ESPN's numbers to last year. We were a little bit off on our, on our strength of schedule to this year um, playing uh, Oregon at home, uh, playing uh, at Arizona, at Wichita State. Um, then you have uh, uh, other quality games, uh, uh, guarantee games, and, and then the tournament. You have uh, Ole Miss and Cincinnati and George Mason. Uh, 
we've I think we've done a good job in making sure that with as many new guys, uh, um, they're they're facing competition that will get them ready for Big 12 play and at least give them a feel for what things will be like. And the great thing is, I think last year you saw the NCA really uh, did a great job in rewarding strength of schedule and not penalizing people for playing good teams and losing. So uh, that gives us all the more reason to do that. What do you what do you see out of the point guard role? I mean, it's, it's not Makai. I mean, who, who so, do you see in that role? So Jared's somebody that's played point guard, uh, um, very familiar and confident in that role. And nowadays, it seems like people have two or three point guards on the court. So you, you, you rather have more than less out there. I like that question. I wish he was able to play this year. Uh, unfortunately, he has to sit out this year. And uh, him and Macy Oteague uh, uh, are two guys that uh, you don't have to watch much of practice to know that they're they're really good. And uh, the best thing about them are their intangibles. They love to be in the gym. Uh, they take care of their business in the in the classroom. Very good students, and uh, do a great job in uh, uh, getting other players in the gym as well. So the, we'll get better each and every day in practice because of them. Unfortunately, just can't use them till next year.